Hey everyone, I'm presenting a quick guide on misinformation and some ways to kind of work around that. Now misinformation is wrong information that is generally believed to be true. For example, if somebody shares a fact and it's wrong, but they believe it's true, then that kind of falls under misinformation. Um, they think it's accurate, but unfortunately it's not. And this can happen a lot on social media. Um, and misinformation spreads when people see the information or hear it, then immediately repeat it without checking to see if it's true. So for sites like Facebook or Twitter, or, or also known as X, um, people will see a picture with some supposed fact that supports an idea they agree with, and then they just kind of repost it and more people see it without actually checking for it, and that's a good way for misinformation to spread. Now, disinformation is when someone gives the wrong information on purpose. Now we're getting a little bit more into maybe like propaganda. Um, they lie because they have something else they want to accomplish or they want to hide something or tarnish somebody's reputation. So they're kind of similar, but also kind of different. And there is a third term we kind of want to go over called confirmation bias. This is a very important term that can affect everyone here. Confirmation bias occurs when people are looking for information to support their already existing beliefs or they're kind of adding their beliefs to the information. In other words, people are looking for information to kind of support what they already want to believe. Uh, for example, let's say there's a political candidate you don't like. Um, if you get some news or you see something saying, hey, maybe they did this good thing, you may not want to believe it because you don't like the candidate. Uh, likewise, if you really like a candidate, you may be more prone to ignore anything critical or not believe it because it doesn't support your belief that this is a good candidate. So these are things we just kind of need to be mindful for when we're perusing information. Now let's kind of give you an example. Now suppose there's a celebrity named Joey Smith. I just made that name up. And there's a video of Joey Smith at a ball game where somebody is singing the national anthem. Now good old Joey is just kind of standing there with everybody else. He's moving his mouth to the lyrics when suddenly he stops moving his mouth and just stands there for the rest of the song. Okay. And that video kind of makes its way around um, through the media. Now, how people interpret what's going on in the video may depend on their own beliefs about Joey. Let's say somebody likes Joey as a celebrity. They may look at this and see a nice news feature and go, oh, he's, he's saying the national anthem. Somebody who doesn't like Joey as a celebrity will look at this and may think, wow, he forgot the lyrics to the national anthem. What a disgrace. And then they go and repost that on social media. Uh, when the truth is, all we know from the video is he just stopped moving his mouth and he stopped reciting the lyrics. Maybe he had a dry throat, maybe he was tired, we don't know. But it's a good example of how people can misinterpret something or interpret something multiple different ways depending on what they believe. So when possible, you always want to look at the original source of the information to see it for yourself. You want to go to the original news article that people were talking about. You want to see the original video. Uh, the best source or the most original source of information we usually call the primary source. It's also good to keep in mind some opinions versus facts because sometimes they can blur a little bit. Uh, so when you're reading something and you're kind of trying to figure it out, ask yourself, is it an opinion or is it a fact? Uh, if it's a fact, what are they relying on for that opinion? Where are they getting that information from? Because there is a reason why courts have to rely on evidence uh, in order to make a case. So try and get in that frame, frame of mind a little bit. Now it's really hard for any news agency to operate without any bias, but some may have it more than others, um, just like our own individuals. So if you see something that you're not too sure about, try to find another publication or a news agency reporting on the same news and kind of compare the articles. See what do they have in common. Uh, for this reason, you probably don't want to just get your news from 100% only one source. Uh, checking multiple news sources is a good way to kind of find out the truth of something. When someone makes a claim, you want to find out what their evidence is. Are they in a position where they have this information? Or does it sound like something they believe, but may be misinformation? Try to avoid articles and headlines that have sensational headlines. You know, something that may read a little bit more like a tabloid, where I feel like people are trying to get an emotion out of you. Um, you usually see this a lot more common in advertising, but uh, a lot of supposed news sources out there may be using that. Uh, when it comes to facts and figures, uh, sometimes an accredited educational institute might be a pretty good source. Uh, a lot of universities, they employ researchers. Uh, 
They have to go through some accreditation processes to be able to put up a website like harvard.edu. Getting that .edu domain takes some time. So if you see something reported on the university website, I tend to give those a little more credence uh, than maybe the average website that I may find online. And sometimes government sources can be a pretty good source of information. I know that can be a little tricky um, depending on people's beliefs. But once again, they also employ uh, a lot of researchers as well. So there is a reason why people writing academic papers need to quote their sources. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So I just kind of want to over, go over this quick guide on misinformation, give you a few tips. If you have any questions, feel free to ask at our reference desk. You can also shoot an email at referencedesk at rogerslibrary.org. Thank you.